Why is conservation of energy such a powerful technique? Mm, that's a good question. Conservation of energy is such a powerful technique because it ex it's true at all times. So say you have 50 seconds in which something is falling down a hill, rolling up a hill, I don't know, whatever. All I need to compare is the beginning time to any other time I, I want to analyze. It doesn't matter what happens in between. I can compare the total energy at the beginning versus the total energy at the end. That's why it's so important. It's so powerful. I don't have to worry about the details of whatever happened. I can just say, is this rocket going to make it? It has this rocket that's on Earth with its gravitational potential energy, with its chemical potential energy and its engines. And I look at the final time. Is it high enough? What speed does it have? I don't have to worry about all the stuff in the middle. Well, wait a second. What if there's friction? Don't you have to worry about it in the middle? You do, right? Because if you take the rocket off, if the rocket takes off in a vacuum, there's no energy taken away from friction. But if the rocket mm -hmm. is in an atmosphere, there is friction. That, oh yeah, sorry. In my example, that rocket started on the moon. There's, yeah. there's no but but I think I think your your idea is still correct because you were looking at reasonable amounts of energy taken away by friction during the process. It's, oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like you don't need to know the details of the friction all the time to get the same analysis done. If you're moving, if the rocket's moving through water versus air, you know there's a difference in friction. So it's still still similar analysis, right? Yep. You have, you have underwater rockets? What example is this?